Hey everyone, Tawana Michelle here, narcissistic abuse recovery coach, mental health therapist, and certified trauma therapist. Today, I want to talk to you guys about how you attract healthier partners once you heal and how you avoid these narcissistic, sociopathic, toxic, harmful individuals. Um, I think one of the most important ways to change your patterns of unhealthy relationships is to work on yourself. Most importantly, I want you all to remember, if you don't remember anything else or get anything from my videos, the most important thing you can do for yourself to avoid narcissists is to work on identifying any unresolved wounds, traumas, attachment uh, traumas, relational traumas, and work on healing that. When you heal yourself, things start to change. And I'm gonna give you three reasons how that happens. So the first thing that happens when you have this awakening and you start to notice that you've been in some pretty, um, you've been in some pretty unhealthy relationships and maybe it's been a pattern. It's been like a different person, similar story. And then you have sort of a rock bottom moment or what one might call the shattering or just an experience with someone that is so devastatingly painful that it sort of wakes you up. It gets you out of the autopilot um, programming that you have been in for a long time. So the first thing that happens when you start to have this awakening is that you start to reflect on your life. You go all the way back from the beginning. Where did I first learn about relationships? When have I first experienced painful relationships? Was it during my childhood? What were my relationships like with my parents? What was their relationship like with each other? What did I witness? What did I learn about relationships? Were my needs met in those early formative years? Did I feel secure? Did I feel safe? Um, did I notice mom and dad fighting with each other all the time? Was one of them really cruel to each other? Was one maybe addicted to something and wasn't in treatment? Was my home environment totally chaotic and unpredictable? And that matters because what we learn about relationships, we tend to recreate and reenact in our adult lives as an unconscious way of trying to heal that and trying to process that wound or those wounds because when you grow up in a family like that there are many and so you start to become aware of what you learned about relationships whether or not you know what a healthy relationship looked like what needs that you may have had for a long time that have never been met in relationships have i ever felt like anyone loved me in a relationship have i ever felt that I could rely on anyone and I could trust them. Have I ever felt that someone's going to really care about my needs and they're going to take care of me in ways that I need to be taken care of? During that awakening, the first um, thing that happens is that we have more insight, we have more awareness into what our wounds are, where they came from. Now, I know there are some of you who say, and I'm not disagreeing with this, I just think it's rare, but there are some folks who say, I don't have any of those type of attachment wounds. I didn't come from a dysfunctional, unhealthy family. My needs were met as a child. I felt loved. I felt safe. I just happened to end up with someone who was a skillful master manipulator. And I fell for it. I didn't see it. That's possible, but that's rare. I've been a therapist for over 20 years. And I'm gonna be honest, I've never met a person like that. Um, I've worked with women who have had a pattern of painful relationships. I've worked with people who have had interpersonal trauma in relationships. I've never met one individual where when we start really digging into the past where everything was just great and all needs were met and they felt loved and safe and secure with themselves. I've never, I've never experienced that. I'm not saying it doesn't happen. I'm saying to you, as a therapist, I've never encountered it professionally. I've never encountered it in my personal life. Now, what I have encountered is that there is usually some initial denial because many of us, if we have not done the work and going back to those wounds, we've blocked it, we've repressed it. 
for our own emotional psychological survival. So if you can get past that blockage, which I've had to do with some clients, and they were able to see and accept the truth about what life was really like for them and whether or not those needs were met in those relationships with parents or primary caregivers. Because when you go back and look at your patterns of relationships and what you learned about relationships and you sort out what's functional and what's not, you start to pay attention to it. The second thing that happens when you start to heal in these relationships is that you start to develop a sense of self. Your self-concept, your, your self-worth starts to change. You start to notice that you start to change the way that you think about yourself, the way you think about your environment, the way you think about relationships in general. You Instead of saying, I'm not worthy of anything better. This is all that I can get. Instead of saying, I just want someone to love me. And so I'm willing to accept whatever comes along with that. Instead of saying, I don't feel good about myself. And so when someone chooses me, then I'm just happy with that. So, or you may have thoughts like, well, this is what relationships are like. There's a lot of fighting in relationships. Or love is painful, love hurts. All of these faulty ways of thinking about relationships start to change and you start to challenge those beliefs about relationships and also about yourself. And you start to work on building your self-confidence, building your self-esteem. You start to let go of the beliefs that you are inadequate, that you are less than, that you are not valuable, that you don't matter. And you start to recognize that these people were wrong about me and just because I didn't get what I needed in my relationships or I was harmed in my relationships or I never saw a healthy relationship, that doesn't say anything about me. That says more about the people who are unable to give me what I need than it says about me. But of course, as children, we internalize it and so we make it about us. But as you start doing that healing work, you start to discover nothing's wrong with me. Just because my family members, my parents, my primary caregivers probably had their own unresolved trauma, their own stuff that they needed to deal with. Whatever they were taught, they passed down. Whatever they were taught, they created in their own nuclear families. And then as a result, I didn't get what I needed. So, and it's not to justify or excuse the behavior. It's just to have an understanding of it. It's to have an awareness of it. And so you're able to separate that from who you are and you're able to say well that doesn't mean that I didn't deserve the things I didn't get it just means they weren't able to give it to me so maybe I do deserve these things maybe I do deserve a partner to be loving and kind and nurturing toward me maybe I do deserve someone who is trustworthy and dependable maybe I do deserve someone who can actually see me and value me and someone who is going to treat me in respectful ways and is not abusive. Maybe I do deserve that. So you start to see your own worth. And as a result, you end up attracting partners who can see your worth as well. And you end up rejecting those who don't. So you start being more selective about who you allow into your life. And not just romantically, in friendships as well, in all types of, of relationships, you become more selective and then you're able to set boundaries because you have discovered your worth. You're more selective about who you're going to allow into your life. You start to set boundaries when you see those red flags, when you see those deal breakers that you have identified, then you're going to be able to say that's not acceptable. I choose not to have this person in my life. You set that boundary and you say this is not acceptable. I expect it to change. If it does not change, I'm willing to walk away. And because you do that, you're sort of weeding out these people that are toxic. You're weeding out these personality disordered folks, your narcissists, your antisocial personality. They have no place in your life. You're not accepting this type of behavior. And the third way that you attract healthier partners once you heal yourself is that you are no longer vulnerable to these people. You are no longer a target. They are not interested in you. Now, I know, of course, some folks are going to say, well, some narcissists do like a challenge and they do go after people they think are high functioning and are easier to manipulate. That is true, but that is an exception. 
Most narcissists are going to choose an easy, vulnerable target. They're going to be able to spot you out in a crowd if you are needy. And I don't mean that in a negative way, but that means your needs have not been met emotionally, relationally. If you have low self-esteem, if they notice that they can just keep pushing the boundary a little bit more and you accept it, if they notice that they manipulate you easily and it doesn't take much work, you know, some sometimes they sense that you're an easy target. Sometimes they're generally interested in whatever they see. Um, and so they get to know you. And as they start talking to you, they're going to seek out information. They're going to learn about your history. They're going to learn about your past. They're going to learn about your weaknesses. They're going to learn about your perceived flaws. They're going to learn what you need and what you didn't get. And they're going to make a decision about whether or not you are a good target for them. Whether or not you are going to be good supply. But when you are healthy and you know your worth and you're able to set boundaries and you know that you're able to select and choose who you want and you don't have to just settle for anything and you know what your limitations and your weaknesses and your vulnerabilities are and you are aware of your wounds that you're working on and you are aware of patterns of behaviors and patterns of relationships that have not worked for you, you're not going to want them. And as a result, they're not going to want you. They're going to see that you are whole, that you are healthy, that you love yourself, that you are not taking their crap. And they're going to move on to the next person. Most So the answer to the question, obviously, do you attract healthier partners when you are healthy? Um, absolutely, you do. Number one most important thing that you can do to improve your relationships is to work on improving yourself. So that's all I have. Thank you guys for watching. Leave a comment down below if you have any thoughts or questions about this. And subscribe to the channel if you have not already. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, take care. Bye.